Last time uh, we discussed the introduction of the Rome's hero Goliath. And I told you about how his mother sheet form, that is the mother in Genesis. Now, uh, what are the functions of the mother sheet? Functions of the mother sheet. You see, mother sheet covers the nerve fiber, the axon, and these nerve fibers are marginated, right? So what are the functions of the mother sheet? Mother sheet has got uh, a protective function. As a protective function. The other function is that mother sheet acts as a insulator. It acts as a insulator. It prevents the spread of the nerve impulse or action potential from one nerve fiber to the other. So it prevents spread of uh, the excitation or spread of the nerve impulse from one nerve fiber to the other because it is an insulator. The other function is that it increases the velocity of conduction along the nerve fiber. So mother sheet increases the velocity of conduction along the nerve fiber. So these are the functions of the mother sheet. Today I will discuss about uh, first about the nerve degeneration, nerve degeneration, also called uh, valerian degeneration, after the name of a scientist. So it is called nerve degeneration or valerian degeneration. A uh, nerve degeneration occurs when there is a crushing injury to the nerve, crushing injury to the nerve, section of the nerve, inject, local injection of uh, some toxic substance, local injection of some toxic substance, and interference or interference with the blood supply. So these are the causes of the nerve degeneration crushing injury of the nerve, section of the nerve, local injection of the toxic substance, and then interference with the blood supply. Now we discuss uh, the mechanism or the process of nerve degeneration when the nerves, nerve is sectioned, nerve is cut. The nerve fiber, the axon is cut here. This is the normal nerve fiber, axon covered by the myelin sheet. And this is a myelinated nerve fiber. And in this, you see that the nerve fiber, the axon is cut. When the nerve fiber is cut, histological and chemical changes occur in the discal segment this is the cut here this is the proximal segment of the nerve fiber and this is the distal segment of the nerve fiber so I told you that certain histological and chemical changes occur when a nerve fiber is cut So the changes start in the distal segment in 24 hours of the nerve section. So in 24 hours of the nerve section, changes start in the distal segment. And the changes are that the nerve fiber, the axon, is swollen. So swelling of the nerve fiber. It is broken into pieces. So swelling of the nerve fiber, it will break up into pieces and then within few days, within few days, 
a little debris is left behind instead of the nerve fiber. So in the distal segment, after a few days, a little debris is left behind uh, after a few days. Now there is swelling of the margin sheet. Swelling of the margin sheet. It is broken and converted into oily droplets. So margin sheet is swollen, it is broken and converted into oily droplets. At this stage, at this stage, the nerve fiber undergoing degeneration, degeneration can be identified by Malchi stain, M-A-R-C-H-I. So by Malchi staining, we can identify the nerve fiber which is undergoing the degeneration. Undergoing degeneration. You see, this is the distal segment. This is the proximal segment. Right? Now, to three days of the nerve section, the distal segment continues to conduct, continues to transmit nerve impulses. Right? So after, after three days of the nerve section, the distal segment it continues to transmit nerve impulse. After three days, transmission of nerve impulse is impaired. So after three days, transmission of the nerve impulse is impaired. After five days, after five days, no nerve impulse can be transmitted by the distal segment of the nerve. So after five days, no nerve impulse can be transmitted by the distal segment of the nerve. Now after the nerve degeneration in the distal segment, the left behind will be endoneural tube along with Schwann cells. So after nerve degeneration, the left behind will be endoneural tube along with some Schwann cells. So this is the process of degeneration. And these are the changes in the distal segment of the nerve fiber. Changes also occur in the cell body of the neuron. Changes also occur in the cell body of the neuron. And the changes occur in 48 hours of the nerve injury. The changes occur in 48 hours of the nerve injury. You see the nucleus, normal position. And what you see here, the nucleus. The nucleus becomes peripheral. It moves to a peripheral position. And there is chromatolysis. There is chromatolysis. What is that? I told you last time that chromatolysis is the breakdown and disappearance of the nissel bodies. There is chromatolysis that is the breakdown and disappearance of the nissel bodies. Right? So these changes also occur in the cell body. And keep in mind that nucleus which becomes eccentric to the periphery, nucleus can be expelled out if the injury to the nerve is severe. So in case of severe injury to the nerve, the nucleus can be expelled out of the cell body. And in that case, in that case, there won't be any nerve regeneration. In that case, there won't be any nerve regeneration. 
there is no nerve regeneration if the nucleus is expelled in case of severe injury to the nerve. So these are the changes uh, which occur when there is nerve degeneration or valerian, valerian degeneration. Nerve regeneration can occur in the peripheral nervous system, of course not in the central nervous system. So nerve regeneration can occur in the peripheral nervous system but not in the central nervous system. You can see in this figure the changes in the cell body of the neuron when there is nerve degeneration. You see, this is the nucleus, missile bodies, right? And what you see here, chromatolysis. No missile body, you see? These are missile bodies, these are granules. And you see here, these break down and disappear from the cell body. And this is called chromato, chromatolysis. And what you see the position of the nucleus, the nucleus becomes peripheral or eccentric. You see? This is the normal uh, nucleus, its position. And this is, it becomes to the periphery it becomes eccentric. And severe cases, of course, the nucleus is expelled out of the cell wall. In severe cases, the nucleus is expelled out of the cell wall. So these are the changes which occur during nerve degeneration or valerian degeneration. So moreover, you see the cell body, cell body becomes rounded. You compare this cell body of the neuron with this cell body of the neuron, it becomes rounded, rounded due to increased fluid content. It becomes rounded due to increased fluid content. Right? So when nerve regeneration occurs, it starts. It starts within say 20 days of the nerve section. So nerve regeneration can start after about 20 days of the nerve section if conditions are favorable. If conditions are favorable. Now after the nerve degeneration, what was left behind? And the neural tube along with Schwann cell and the neural tube along with the Schwann cell. Now if nerve fiber is to regenerate then or you say when there is recovery or nerve fiber is to regenerate in that case the in the cell body changes occur changes occur the nucleus becomes central you see the nucleus becomes to its own original position, it becomes central. Nissal bodies, nissal granules reappear, Golgi operators reappear when there is going to be recovery or there is regeneration. There is regeneration. You see, this is the nerve fiber which is myelinated, 
and this is the section in the nerve fiber. Right? I told you by discussing the nerve degeneration that the axon it swells up, it breaks down, and little debris is left behind instead of the axon. Moreover, the body sheet is swollen, it breaks down and replaced by oily droplets. You see? Replaced by the oily droplets. You see here also margin droplets instead of the margin sheet. And after this nerve degeneration left behind will be and the neural tube and the neurium along with the Schwann cells. Along with the Schwann cells. Now in this process of degeneration, degeneration, the Schwann cells and the macrophages, these help. So Schwann cells and macrophages, these help in the process of degeneration. Now the nerve fiber is to regenerate. And we discussed now about the process of regeneration. The process of regeneration. The Schwann cells, the Schwann cells, these multiply, proliferate, these multiply, proliferate to give rise to elongated cells, to give rise to elongated cells. So from the Schwann cells, these uh, proliferate, multiply to give rise to elongated cells. But this growth of, this growth from the Schwann cell is in all directions. But useful growth will be towards the proximal segment. From distal segment, from the Schwann cells, the negative cells are given out and these pass towards the proximal segment. By this growth of the Schwann cells, by the growth of Schwann cells, the gap between the cut ends is filled. Due to the growth of the Schwann cells, the gap between the cut ends is filled. Right? So the gap between the cut ends of the nerve fiber is filled. Fibroblasts also help to fill the gap between the two cut ends. If you do cut ends. And then from the proximal segment, you know, in this sense, is the cut end of the nerve fiber. So from the cut end of the nerve fiber in the proximal end, fibrils are given out. Fibrils are given out. And these fibrils, these move, these enter the distal segment. These fibrils, these enter the distal segment. So about 50 of the fibrils, they come out of the proximal segment and grow into the distal segment. After some days, after some days, only one fibril remains, the other disappears. So after a few days, only one fibril entering the distal segment, it persists the others others disappear. And this one fibril, it grows, it will increase in the diameter to form the fiber or the X. Right? So I told you that from the proximal segment, from the exon of the proximal segment, fibers are given out. These enter the distal segment. The number may be up to 50. After some days, others disappear, only one remains. So one fiber, it grows in the distal segment, it increases in the diameter, 
and the others fibrillary disappear. This fiber will form the axon or nerve fiber of the degrowth process. Now keep in mind that the newly formed nerve fiber has a diameter not more than 80% of the body. So newly formed nerve fiber has a diameter not more than 80% of the body. This is the axon nerve fiber newly formed. Its diameter is not more than 80% of the body. Now after about say three weeks, myelin sheet <coughs> also begins to form. After about 20 days, the myelin sheet also begins to form. This is the nerve fiber. Nerve fiber. After regeneration, this is also the nerve fiber, the fibril after regeneration. And these are shown cells which will form the new myelin sheet. Now, after this regeneration, the newly formed nerve fiber is present about, say, after about uh, three weeks or three months. Three months. But the completion of the myelin sheet, so myelin sheet rose is completed after about one year. So regeneration of the new myelin sheet, it takes about uh, one, year. one year. So this is the process of the regeneration of the nerve fiber. And keep in mind, nerve regeneration can occur in the peripheral nervous system, but not in the uh, center nervous system. Uh, yesterday we discussed that the Schwann cells retain the ability to form myelin sheet throughout life. Schwann cells retain their ability to form myelin sheet throughout life. But oligodendroglycide, once these have formed the myelin, lose the ability to form it again. So that is why there is no regeneration in the central nervous system, but it can occur in the peripheral nervous system. So this was about the process of nerve degeneration, that is the, and the process of the nerve regeneration.